Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Shelley Malat from Cast and Crew Marketing. Welcome to another installment of our webinar series, Creating the Digital Production Office. Today, our focus is on the crew. Cast and Crew Vice President of Product Marketing and Strategy, Ivana Malcolm, and the team will be taking you on a tour of My Cast and Crew, Start Plus, and Hours Plus and how you can say goodbye to paper onboarding and time cards forever. Before I hand off to our speakers, let me remind you of a few things. If you do have any questions during the presentation, type them into the Q&A box. We have over 3,500 people registered for the event today. So to help us answer as many of your questions as possible, please be sure to upvote if someone has already asked what you want to hear. Ivana and the team will be answering you throughout the webinar. We will also be providing a video recording to all who registered, so be sure to look for that link in your email later today. And now, Ivana and team will take you on a tour of our digital products. Thank you, Shelley, and we're super excited to be back again. And thank you everyone for joining us. I can't believe the overwhelming response and attendance. We really appreciate your participation and grateful that you are taking time out of your day to be here. This is our fourth installment of our webinar series. For the last few weeks, we have been showcasing our products and how studios and accounting teams can create the digital production office. Today's webinar is a special one as we're focused on you, the crew. Our goal is to help prepare you and provide a glimpse into what to expect when you return to work on production. And some of you may have experienced digital products, whether it's through digital onboarding or digital time cards. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed how productions work. And some of the changes we're anticipating are things like remote work for accounting teams. Crew will need to adhere to social distancing rules and wear personal protective equipment. And one of the most important changes is that paper is no longer an option. Studios, unions, and production accounting teams are looking to create digital workflows in order to help keep crew safe. And today, we're gonna to show you what that looks like. And to help me do that, I would like to introduce Alexis Klein. She is a customer success manager on my team, and she loves to guide production teams and crew members as they transition from paper and catapult them into the digital age. Welcome, Alexis. Thank you, I'm excited to be here. Oh, we're happy to have you. Also with me is Jim Gomez, product solutionist. He is our secret weapon. And not only does he love co collaborating with our clients to create innovative solutions, he also apparently lands planes by night. <laughs> <laughs> love the headset, Jim. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Happy to talk to all of you. Excellent. So um, let's dig in. So Alexis, Jim, and I will take you through the process of getting started digitally on production and the three products you will be interacting with. My Cast and Crew, um, it is our centralized hub and really empowers crew members to manage their own digital profiles and information. Things like address, direct deposit, or just a couple of the items. Think about it like an Amazon account, except that we don't really want your credit card info. Well, I mean, no, no Alexis. No. Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> no credit card info. Um, there's also Start Plus. Um, it is our digital onboarding tool. This is where you're going to receive and confirm offers sent to you. You will also electronically sign the Start Form, I-9, and other onboarding documents. And last but not least, Hours Plus is for digital time cards, where you can create and submit a time card for approval or sign one that was sent to you by your department head or key for you to approve. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the baton to Jim and he will talk more about my cast and crew, what you can manage in the portal and how you can begin to create your digital profile and walk you through registration. Jim, take Thank it away. Thanks, Ivana, and welcome everybody. I'm happy to have all of you here with us today. So my cast and crew is the portal where you can update your addresses and direct deposit information you can also download your pay stubs and W-2s when we place them there as soon as they're ready. You'll also be able to store personal files such as your articles of incorporation and inventory list in My Files tab. And all of this is a single sign-on access, which means it's the same email address, username, and password for the login. So let's get started. I'm going to first tell you how to get there. 
you can go to the login page at www.my.castandcrew.com. You can also find us on our website at My Cast and Crew Login. Now to begin the process, you want to register your account with us. And this is just a validation of your identity and information with us. It's part of our security towards you. Go ahead and click the register for W2 pay steps and direct deposit button on the login screen. And then when you do, you'll be taken to a registration page where you'll enter in, sorry, you'll enter in some basic information about yourself to validate your identity. Once that is successfully entered, we're gonna send you an email very promptly. And that email is good for 72 hours. There will be a link in there, activate my account. Locate that link and click it to begin that activation process when you're ready. There's one more thing to note, Jim. I wanted to kind of step in there for a second. That activation account, how long does that last? That's good for 72 hours. Okay, great. So yeah. we have 72 hours in which to activate the account as we register in my cast and crew. Great. Absolutely. Carry on, my friend. <laughs> so, once, yeah, so, so once you click that activation link, you're going to be taken to an area where, where you can set up your password. You'll first come up with a password. We recommend a phrase for extra security confirm the password, and then choose a security password question, and then a security password image, just in case you have to reset them at a later time. And once you've got those two things done, you can go to the login page and log in with your new password. On your first login, you're going to be asked to set up an MFA. MFA, that's multi-factor authentication. That's, a, that's where we send you a six-digit code every time you sign in, and you take that code and you let us know that you're the person signing into your account. There are three ways to receive that code, either through the OctaVerify app, SMS, which is just an acronym for text message, and voice call. We recommend the SMS text message method, and today we'll be going over how to do that. So be sure to click Setup when, you, when you're ready. Now to enter in that phone number, you're gonna tell us where you'd like to receive a six digit code. That's gonna be your phone number. Go ahead and enter that in. If your country is different than the United States, be sure to check it from the dropdown. Once you've gotten that code, enter it in and click verify. All right. Thank you, Jim, so much for walking us through that. Now um, let's go into the product and, and show them what they can do. Awesome, let's Great. bring that up. So we've got our password set up, our MFA set up as well. So now we're ready to log in. Got my autosave password here. And now I'm going to say send code to receive that code. It takes about a second, but it's quite fast. There we go. Awesome. And now we're in the My Cast and Crew portal. It's broken, out, broken down uh, into a bulletin board and some tabs and our systems on the right hand side. So here's the grand tour. We'll have important information from Cast and Crew listed on our bulletin board. Down below, we'll have links to our quick start guides, product support team, and employee help desk where they can help you uh, get reissues of checks. Our support team can help you reset your passwords and our quick start guides can offer you some helpful tips and tutorials. On the next tab, my profile. This is where you can maintain your addresses, personal information, emergency contacts and direct deposit. To do that, you just gotta click on edit and all the fields that are editable will be in green. That's awesome. And Jim, um, I just noticed, first of all, I guess I'm a crew member today. Number yeah. one. Welcome to the team. <laughs> I'm going back to my roots. I, I loved production when I was on it. Um, but I did notice too that some of those fields are grayed out. Can you tell the, um, can you tell the, the audience what, what that's all about and how do they um, change that information if they need to? Great point. So typically your name, date of birth, and social are things that aren't going to change very often. But in the event that they do, please contact our employee help desk to help update those items. Awesome. Their contact info is up here just in case you need it. We also have it on the previous screen. When in doubt, call support. Yep, we'll help you out. <laughs> Absolutely. 
And then lastly, if you want to enable direct deposit for yourself on the My Profile tab, go ahead and enable it. If you want to update it, click the Edit icon. This is how you toggle that switch to enable. Go ahead and update any account numbers that you see. And remember, if you don't know your account number or routing number, you can find it on a physical check. That's awesome. Hey, Jim, I also see that um, we're able to go paperless for the pay stubs. If I'm not getting any paper pay stubs anymore, how am I getting pay stubs? Aha. Uh -huh. So Alexis, <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. gotcha. we're, we're going to upload those to your my pay stubs file as soon as they're ready. And you can download those, download them at any time. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. And in the my tax documents tab is where we'll update your, your tax documents, <laughs> such as your W-2s. As soon as they're ready, you can download those into your taxes which actually might be today for 2020, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right. It got punted, right? Yep. <laughs> and then my files is where you can keep copies of personal documents like your articles of incorporation, box rental inventory lists, or even car allowance uh, insurance items or uh, registration items. Yep. I'm going to geek out here for a second because this is my favorite part of my cast and crew is the my file section because I know what a what a struggle it is for some of the crew members who have to bring in the past would bring these documents to set have to take them to the accounting office in order to supply their inventory and to your point the articles of incorporation. Now you can store it here and as you digitally onboard through Start Plus you're able to access it which is just a, a real game changer. Right. And if you ever have any questions about which version you uploaded here, because you can keep multiple versions of a box rental here. We have the date you uploaded it, as well as uh, an ability to download and preview that box rental. In the bottom here, you'll have completed offers. So in the event you have to reference any of the offers you've gotten in the past, I know that sometimes there are policy and procedure documents you want to look up. You'll have those available to you at all times. The last tab in the My Cast and Crew profile is My W-4s. So in this year, 2020, the federal government updated their withholding statement. So if we have one for you already, we're going to grandfather you in and keep uh, withholding the taxes on that amount. But if you don't have one with us, we ask that you fill one out as soon as possible because uh, as federal law states, if we don't have one for you, we have to withhold the maximum amount and we don't want anybody being caught off guard. So please log in and upload your W-4 as soon as you can. If you need to do one for an individual state, you can also do that. Either way, to get started, click add new W-4 and choose a federal or state and then a drop down for the state. And that's the My Cast and Crew portal. Links to our products will be on the right-hand side. Oh, that's awesome. So Alexis, I think we have a bunch of questions that we can take on the My Cast and Crew um, portal. Do you want to, um, do you want to ask some of them for us? I do. Um, so we have someone that would like to remain anonymous and that person asks, uh, do you do this once for yourself and is all good for your shows to work on or do you have to do this for each show on which you work? Ooh, and my favorite question. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> this is the best part about my cast and crew and why I totally get excited about it is because when you complete this, it goes from show to show. It follows you. And that's why we really do encourage all crew members to sign up, register, go through the process and get ready so that when you come back to production, it'll be far easier for you when you start digitally onboarding and creating time cards. Lovely, thank you. Um, Cassandra was wondering if there is an app for this. So our applications are mobile responsive. So it's not an app on the app store, but you can access our products through either the Chrome or through Safari, and you can type in, you know, www.bycastandcrew.com and access our application that way. Thank you so much. Um, Nancy is asking, I believe it's possible some people already have a cast and crew account. Is this possible? Ooh, Jim, you take that one. It, it is very possible. If you, uh, so we launched our My Cast and Crew a little over a year ago. Uh, we sent out a big email about direct deposit a few months ago and that, you know, in, we had a huge influx. So you might have an account already. If you have any questions about that, 
please call our product support team and they will validate your identity and let you know if you have an account with us already. Lovely. Um, and it looks like Greg would like to know whoop, how long pay stubs will be available. Yeah, mm -hmm. so pay stubs are available for the full tax year and uh, we're going to incorporate some other years as well, but you'll have it for the full 2020 year. Thank you so much. Uh, let's see. We have a question from Rosanna wondering if we can direct a deposit to any bank. Yep, we don't have any restrictions on the direct deposit yet, so feel free to enter in your information there whenever you're ready. Thank Great. you so much. And Jim, there's another question here that I have. Um, it says, as an actress, where could I upload my articles of incorporation in my cast and crew? Well, I've got the screen up. Let's just do a visual. So Great. under under my files, come over to my files and keep a, uh, we have an other folder that you can use to upload just about anything else that doesn't fit in the allowance uh, categories. So go ahead and keep a copy in here. Fantastic. Great. Alexis, do we have a couple more before we move on to the next portion? Sure. We, we have someone asking, Laura would like to know, what happens if a crew member is not signed up for direct deposit? So Jim, if please? a crew member is not signed up for direct deposit, they will be mailed a physical check from cast and crew and their pay stubs will still be available in the My Cast and Crew tab. Lovely. Thank Great. You. Thank you, Jim. And then Alexis, I see one that's an important one too. It says, um, there was a question about submitting social security card information. Will that still be done on the job site or will employees be required to submit them electronically? And I think this is one that we are going to cover um, for START Plus, right? When we go through the um, I-9 process? That is correct. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, so, so Thomas, hang in there. We are going to answer your question as we start to go through the demo of START Plus. Uh, we also, though, we'll, we will talk about this I-9 right now. We have an anonymous person that wants to know if we can add the I-9 to the My Files folder. Um, not at this time. Uh, really, the only doc tax documentation that can be put in there will be the W-4. The I-9 is given to you uh, on a production-to-production -production basis. All right, fantastic. And let's do one more, and then we're going to take them through Start Plus. Absolutely. Um, give me one second. There are great questions here. <laughs> So many. As you're filtering, they're all kind of popping up. Uh, can a crew member <laughs> at the same time, and then I lose them. So you guys are quicker at typing than I am at reading. I don't know what that says about me. Okay, who's supposed to fill out a W-4? Great question. So anybody working in the United States um, or sometimes abroad, depending if you're being taxed here, if your primary residence is here, you should be filling out a W-4. Now, if we have one for you on file already, uh, that's fine. We're going to use it on all your projects going forward. But if we don't, then we have to withhold the maximum amount. And so we really advise everyone get in there and keep your W-4s up to date at least every year. But um, they will be grandfathered in from year to year. All right. That's awesome. All right, guys. Um, we I know there's a lot of questions out there, but we do want to get to the next portion of um, the webinar. So the team in the background, a little shout out. We have about four or five people in the background answering questions. So please be patient while we get to all of them. Um, in the meantime, so so can Jim and Alexis, can you walk us through now that we've done my cast and crew and created our profile? The next step in the process is that I'm expecting a job offer. Let's say, you know, I've had that phone call. Can you walk me through what that looks like in Start Plus? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> You're so excited about it. That's great. I am. <laughs> All right. So once, once uh, an offer has been extended to you, it will be emailed to you. You'll get a notification that lets you know a job offer has been sent. So let me bring this up a little closer. The email will look like this. Hey, Ivana, you've been invited you know, to Jim's Jolly Jess project. We'll have some text from the production here and you can click start. This will take you right to the login page if you're not signed in, but if you are already, it'll take you to the uh, My Cast and Crew page. 
Lovely. Yep. So once we get over to the My Cast and Crew page, there it is, you're gonna hit the link to the right, the Start Plus link. Jim's gonna hit that for us, lovely. And where it's gonna take you in is it to your offers. So your brand new offer is gonna show up there under new. Um, any offers that you have put through the approval flow will show up there and it will show you in any space it is in that approval flow. It'll also let you know anything that has been approved or anything that you have rejected. So you're always gonna have these here. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna go into this new offer and I'm gonna show you how to fill this out. So once we click into the offer, this is the first time you're actually going to be seeing your offer and we give you some really handy information here. In the upper right hand corner, we're gonna let you know what your hiring manager's name, email address and phone number is. So if you need to ask for some clarification from them about your deal, give them a call, send them an email. To the left of that is Ivana here. If she sees that there's some information that isn't up to date, she can go ahead and push that blue up to date contact info. It will take her back to my caster crew and she can update that. As we go further down the page, we're gonna see just a high level view of what is in our deal. So we have our start date, terms of employment, and any sort of allowances or reimbursements that we may have. As we go further down still, what you can see in this additional deal terms note, now that's something that your hiring manager has filled out for you to let you know kind of just more details for your deal. And at the bottom here, we have two options from the start. We can accept this offer, or we can reject this offer. Now, if we reject this offer, we do have to write a note as to why. We really suggest that you put in something very specific, right? My box knows it should be $75, so that when you then reject this back to your hiring manager, it can be updated and sent back. But if you don't write anything in that box, you won't be able to submit it, so don't worry, no accidental rejections. So we'll, we're liking what we see so far. We'll go ahead and accept. Now, everyone's favorite digital document, the I-9. Um, I will be honest with you. This is one of the more challenging documents. It is a federal document and the federal government states that you have to physically type in all of your personal information. Um, we're gonna go ahead and agree that even though this is an electronic document, that it is legally binding. So we'll continue on here. Um, every time I log into the system, it's gonna ask me for my legal name. I'm gonna type that in and also my initials. I have two choices here. I can save for the duration of my session or I don't have to do that. And every time I have to sign my name, I can type it in if I'd like. I love speed, so I'm gonna go ahead and click yes, save the duration of my session. So now we're looking at the I-9. Anything that is a yellow box that says required needs some sort of information. Now, if there's any information that does not apply to you, like Ivana does not have a middle name or any other last name, so she's gonna put N backslash A. Everything else, she'll just fill out as normal. Jim, you are super quick at this. Um, <clears throat> so if you notice the, the social security number box, it is in light blue because for the state of California, it is optional to put in your social security number. If you are in an E-Verify state like Georgia or Louisiana, that's going to be a required field. So now at some point, if you get lost within a document and you go, I feel like I should be able to move on, why can't I? If you go to the left-hand side to our document tree here, Anything with a green check means it's thoroughly completed. Anything with a gray X mark means it needs to still be completed. And if I check on that there, boop, it's gonna take me to where I need to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and click citizen, lovely. And it's gonna put NA for things that do not apply to me. And now I'm gonna go ahead, type in my signature one more time, lovely. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sign Oh, I'm going to date. And this preparer translator, hot tip, this gets missed quite a bit. So we'll go ahead, press that. And now you can see at the bottom, this dialog box has popped up and we can continue on. Now you're going to see, we're going to start cooking with fire here. The system is able to put in all of my personal details, my social security number, my address, all of this stuff is already imprinted on me. What I'm really just doing is checking to make sure I like what I see, everything's above board. So, yep, everything looks good to me. There's my additional client uh, information there. I'm gonna go ahead and sign and date, and I'm gonna continue on. Again, so this is just kind of like our demo deal memo. Um, it's gonna look specific to the production on which you are on currently. 
So this is just for purposes, just to show you what, what you can expect when you get into Start Plus. So again, light blue is optional. We'll go ahead. No, nope, you do not get my home phone number. We'll continue on. All of my deal terms look great. I'll sign, I'll date, and then I will continue. Same thing, Wage Theft Protection Act form. If you are a non-union employee, you will be receiving these. And again, it's just gonna ask for that signature and that's on page two. So we'll continue on here. And in the document tree, it even tells you on which page your signature belongs. Okay, so a conflict of interest form. You may at some point um, work for a production company that needs to know whether or not you have a conflict of interest. So as we go down here, I'm just gonna show you some functionality that you may run into. So if I had a conflict of interest and I clicked that button, thank you so much, there would be some more required fields that would pop up for me and I would just have to fill them out as required. Um, since I do not have any conflicts, I am conflict free and go ahead, click that, sign there, date there, and I can continue on. Okay, policies and procedures. This is gonna become very important in the day of COVID, in the, the day and age of COVID rather. Um, so on this one, they're going to acknowledge that we have received these documents, but you may want to actually go in there and read some of this, um, especially just to make sure that, that those policies of, of how to keep yourself safe during COVID are something that you really know. So you can do a couple of things on here. At the top, as Jim is showing you, we can zoom in. Lovely, lovely. Or we can toggle between pages. So we're on page one now. We can go to page two or three as we needed. Once we've read anything and we feel comfortable, we can go ahead, we can initial, and we can date. So at this point, as you can see up in the upper right hand corner, that accept offer has turned green. We still have a few options here if we need them. So if I'm just not quite sure about this offer, I can always save it, come back later and finish it. I can get up until this point and any point up until now, I can reject this offer. I can fill all this out and reject it if I need to. It's going to ask for that information one more time. But I love everything I saw today. Great. Lovely. Uh, once I accept the offer, it's going to send me to this page and it's just going to tell me, hey, um, make sure you bring your I-9 stuff. And to Thomas's point about how to give the I-9 information, in COVID, we're seeing a lot of production offices check I-9s um, digitally, if you will. So we've seen it through Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, something like that. And, and then that becomes a valid form of, of being able to check that. Um, it's also going to say to make sure you go and fill out your W-4s. So make sure you go and fill out your W-4s. But at that point, that is it for me. Fantastic. Thank you, Alexis. So we've got a, a, a bunch of questions um, and thank you for answering the I-9. So just to kind of reiterate on that, um, each production will actually probably inform you on how best to, to showcase your documentation um, and, you know, in what methodology. And I know we've been working a lot with, with our clients um, in how to do that. So each production will be slightly different, but yes, um, we feel that a lot of that will be done um, online and where you will show your face and your document together for verification. Um, in addition to that, there was a question around loan outs. What if I'm a loan out and I go through this process? How does that work? Right, so for loan outs, it's very, very easy. You'll just tell your hiring manager um, at the beginning that you are a loan out. They'll make sure that the correct um, cast and crew start form is in there. You can put, as we talked about before in the my files, your, uh, your articles of incorporation, and then usually on that page of the supporting document type, then we'll go ahead and put them there. Great. Fantastic. So um, there is some questions here about um, above the line or, or um, AD that have managers or their agents fill out their documentation um, for them. And the question here is whether or not that's possible in Start Plus. And so, so with that, I'll take that question actually. So, so we do not allow for proxy signers within Start Plus. So the, um, you know, the idea is that you have to create your own username and password. And obviously that is a part of who, your identity. 
And so we do not recommend sharing that um, in any way, shape or form. Um, it is recommended that the individual actually go through the system. Lovely. And I also have a question here from Stephen. He says he signed on to my casting crew page and he's not seeing everything that's on the screen, the start plus thing. Do I need anything to update the version I see when I sign in? So this really just depends on whether or not the show that you are on is actually on Start Plus. You will be invited to Start Plus when you are on a show that is using Start Plus. So and until and unless you are invited, that will not that will not populate there. You will just be able to see your dashboard. Um, here we go. We have one from Nick. Does the INI information save for future shows, or do you have to enter this information every time? Um, yes, you will have to fill out this I-9 every time um, because it's, it's more of a safety precaution and measure for you to make sure that you are actually working for the show that you are saying that you are working for. So at the moment, yes, we're, you fill that out um, on every show, but it's, it's to make sure that, that you're working for the correct company. Yep. We also have another question. Um, it says, will you need access to the portal to upload time cards from Hours Plus. So Jim, do you wanna take that question? Absolutely, so great question. So uh, you will need access to the portal to create time cards through Hours Plus. Hours Plus is that mechanism we're gonna allow you to create and submit time cards through there. There's no need for digital or for P uploading PDF time cards anymore. That's fantastic. Um, also, Claudia asks, I have an account already. Do I need to re-register? Um, the answer is no, you do not need to re-register. You just have to go ahead and log in with your username and password. If you need to reset your password, um, you can do so through the um, application or you can contact support to help you with that. Yeah. And Claudia, as long as you have these tabs up here, that means you're registered. If you're not registered, there'll be a green text right here that lets you know um, you can register now. Great. Lovely. Um, I have one here that says, um, oh goodness. <laughs> Did you lose it? <laughs> the second I'm like, oh, there was we go. The and then, <laughs> yeah, oh goodness. No, it was Alexis, you are fantastic. That's not really a question, but I do appreciate it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, uh, do we still need to carry our passports and our social security card? That's a great question. And it really and truly just depends on your production and what it is that they are requiring from you. Um, like I said before, usually what they're doing to verify these I-9s is over Skype, FaceTime, so on and so forth. Um, after the fact, we, we have seen different ways for them to kind of hold on to that documentation. I can't speak for every single production company. I can only tell you that they have been requesting it and it is a legally viable option. Um, past that, it, it could go either way. It's kind of a, is the, is the long and the short of that. Um, is it, let's see here. There's another question, um, and I think we answered this before, but Jim, help me out. Are we able to access W2 docs from previous tax years? Yes, so we'll go back at least as uh, far back as 2018. We'll, we've put them up there since then. We're also gonna be putting you know, all of our future uh, W2s up there, and we're gonna keep them for up to seven years, which is as long as the uh, IRS audit period is. Yep. Fantastic. Um, and then Sam has a really good question about um, this is a good way to maintain payroll for the transportation crew. Um, and they may be a little stuck on hard copy kind of paperwork. How can we get them to start using um, a digital system. So Sam. Um, yes, we completely understand there's there's a bunch of individuals in the entertainment industry that may or may not be, you know, um, wanting to, to kind of delve into technology, we are here for them. So we do offer training, um, especially as, you know, crew starts to come back onto a production, we offer specific project training as well as regular training. Um, and you can get that information through our plus support team as well. But yeah, we hear you. Um, it's just gonna take some time for people to kind of get used to that and, and get familiar with digital products. Absolutely. Um, Joyce is wondering if there is a time limit on how soon you have to access the invite. 
Yes, the invite that you receive um, either from my cast and crew to register or from a production when they're inviting you into Start Plus, that link uh, expires after 72 hours for um, production reasons. So if that link does expire, you can reach out to Plus Support and they can get you a new link. Yep, and, and although the link expires, the offer doesn't. So you can log into cast and, or my cast and crew and start doing the offer directly without the link. All right, fantastic. We got one more and then we're going to jump into hours plus. So um, Nick asks, can production offices insert their own pages to be filled out separate from the studio level, such as crew info sheet? Um, they rely very, he relies very heavily on this um, with paper packets. Um, yes, the answer is yes, yes, and yes, you can absolutely do that. Um, any document that you want to put through on Start Plus, we are able to upload that document into the system, map the fields, and have that be filled out. Um, and then also, in addition to that, um, you will have access to our product studio where um, that document can be separated out and you have access to it so that you can immediately get the crew info sheet um, once the offer has been approved. Um, and you can see that on our previous webinar. Um, if you want to take a look, that's the Start Plus and Studio Plus webinar. You can see how we do that. Um, all right, great. So, so I'm going to pause on questions now because we still have um, hours plus to do. So, so guys, we went through my cast and crew, and we put um, we we saw how we can register and how we create our digital profile, and then we saw you know I got an offer how I receive that offer, how I work through the documents. Now I'm working. Now I need to create my time card. How do I do that? Great question. So we're going to go into hours plus. So I only gonna... ask really good questions. <laughs> 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 Just be forewarned. <laughs> so, so whenever you're invited to an hours plus project, you're invited to do a time card on there. You're going to receive an email invitation. And let me show you what that looks like now. So the email invitation looks just like this. It'll come in. There will be a get started button at the bottom. You're going to want to go ahead and click that. Then if you're not already signed in, you'll be taken to the sign in page. we will enter in your email and password to log in. And you're going to validate your social security number for security to link up that deal memo with your account. Then once that's input, you can create or click continue and you'll be taken to the hours plus portion. Now for this portion, I really wanna show you on a mobile device because that's where most of us will be doing our time cards throughout the week. So let me switch over to that now. So I'm gonna click sign in. I'm gonna get that code emailed to me. I'm sorry, text it to me, not email. So while we wait for the um, authentication, um, a couple of other things to remember um, as far as getting ready for production, especially with hours plus, um, there is a great question that I can go ahead and answer right now. Um, so there was a question about whether or not they can receive uh, time cards from their department head and, um, and sign off on that. And that's absolutely correct. In Hours Plus, you are absolutely able to do that. Uh, we won't showcase that to you and how the department does that, the department head, but they can create group time, uh, group time cards for them. And, but we will show you what does that look like for you when you will receive one of those and how you will be able to approve it. And so Jim, are you in the system? I am in the system. Yay. So I'm Fantastic. starting off from the My Cast and Crew dashboard on a mobile device. So I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom. They used to be on the right-hand side, but on a mobile device, we put them at the bottom. Go ahead and click Hours Plus to go right into there. And you're gonna be shown the projects or pro project or projects that you're working on. Go ahead and choose the one that you wanna create a time card for and move forward. You also have a search button at the top if you're just working on so many projects, you can type that in to narrow it down. One second here, there we go. So we're gonna have three options, create time card, finish ex existing time cards or view historical time cards. So let's start one from scratch. We'll go to the top as create time card. Let's choose a, a week ending date. Let's do 613. Choose my occupation. And looks good, enter some times down here in the bottom. But before I do that, I wanna point out a copy from previous week button. Now this will copy the hours from a previous week's time card and put them onto the time card that you're creating. Now you can still make changes to that time card if you want. And I chose week 613, there we go. 
done. And whenever there's a time card already created for me, it'll give me that heads up warning that I have two already done. So I don't want to make a third one. I'm going to click cancel and choose a different week ending because I messed up. 7-Eleven. Looks good. Enter times. And now I'll be taken to my time card screen. If I scroll down, I can see the days of the week. And just like you would enter a time card on paper, you can enter your in and out times here. The days of the week turn on and off simply by pushing on them. Start by entering the days on the top day. You're going to choose a date type. Most of us will be choosing worked, but there are exceptions in the drop down that you can choose. We're going to pre-fill the work location that we have, but you can also update this if they change. Then choose a call time. We, we use a 24 hour clock to prevent overlapping times. Actually, that's not my lunch. My lunch is at 12. And we can even do 12.5 and the system will know that we're meant 12.30. And once you've got your times entered, you can copy those times to all days. And that's going to copy them to the rest of the week. And you can see that I have 10 hours worked each day for a total of five hours for the week. If I need to add a comment on a time card, I can do that here. And I can use this gray check mark to save my comment. It'll be down here at the bottom for confirmation. That way you know it's here. Next, we have allowances. I've set up my, a, uh, a generic allowance for myself but I can just do a new one, my box rental and my amount, but I want to do the taxable one for $50. If I have an uploading, if I have a supporting document, I can upload that here. You can even upload it from your camera roll on your phone, but when you're ready, go ahead and click save. And there it is. You can also add generic notes to your time card in this notes field. And once the time card is ready to go, you can click submit in the bottom right corner, or you can save it and come back to it later or delete it. But well, we're going to click submit. And now it's going to ask, it's going to give us a heads up that the times we copied are identical, but we know that they're correct because we work the same times every day. Yes, approve. And now it's going to ask us to sign the time card before we submit it. Your signature will be just like the hint below, Ivana Validation, capital and all. I like that I'm validated, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna click approve and our time card will be submitted to our department head or payroll accountant. Now there are there is another way you can do a time card and it's, your, it's if your department head or payroll accountant submit it to you. I, just like we saw before, you'll get an email letting you know a time card's been created for you. You can access that email and click the link and you'll be taken to this tab here that we're on right now, finish time cards. So the status says ready for review and it was created by our department head, Susan. To go into this time card, just click it and it should open up for you already filled out. You can review the time card, the in and out times. And if everything looks good, go ahead and approve in the bottom right corner or reject it and let Susan know that she has to change something for you. But I'm going to click approve and just like before, I'm going to sign the time card with my name or Ivana's name. <laughs> As it were. Do I have a good rate? That's what I want to know. Yes, all rates are good. Okay. <laughs> That's, That's a really good answer, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can see in the history tab all the time cards that are in process or that have already been approved. And that's how you submit a time card. You can have it submitted to you or you can submit one to them. Fantastic. Thank you so much for taking us through that, Jim, and showcasing it on a, on a phone. Um, and just as a reminder, you can do it on, on, obviously, on the mobile phone, but you can also do it on an iPad or on a desktop, whatever you have accessible um, in your home. But I want to go ahead and, um, and answer some questions. Um, Alexis, I think you've been teeing them up for us. I have. So we have um, some really great questions here. So James says, I work on a flat and just fill in worked or not worked instead of hours. How does that work here? So James, um, it's going to work the same exact way in hours plus as it does on your time card. So if you have just a flat, you'll go in, press worked, and that's that. It's pretty, pretty easy going there. 
Yep, exactly. And then um, I have a question here on the deal memo. This actually goes back to Start Plus. It says, I typically sign um, as per IOTC 52 CBA. Will that be okay? Um, the answer is yes. We do have the ability in Start Plus for local 52 members to sign as per local 52. Um, we have done that on a, on a few different productions um, and we're able to accommodate that. Lovely. So Pamela would like to know, does an employee put in their own guaranteed hours? What if they have an eight hour guarantee? Are they able to input 10 or 12 hour guarantee or will it trigger or reject or something? Jim, would you like to talk to that? Yeah, so if your deal memo has a guarantee on there, we know that in the back end, all you have to do is tell us the hours that you worked. And if you worked less than eight, but you have a guarantee of eight, we'll make sure you get paid for all eight. Lovely. Um, I had someone ask about re-rating and how that works within the system. Awesome. So if if you got a pay bump during a, just a specific day, you could go ahead there and write it on the comment section. The actual change is done by your, your payroll accountant. Um, so that's nothing that you would actually have to do other than just notating the day of when that pay bump actually happened. Um, okay, here's a great one. Uh, what if you need to revise something on a time card? Jim, would you like to answer that? Absolutely. So uh, there are you can have your department head reject it back to you so that you can edit it or they can edit them themselves if they reject it back to you and make the change. You could also just do a new time card and send it to them and then have them delete the other one. Lovely. Uh, we have another one here. Uh, so here's one. I have one. Mm -hmm. It says, will people other than accountants be able to send start work and or hire people? For example, can a best boy hire their day players? And the answer is absolutely. Um, our system is designed to be very flexible. So what we can do is we can actually have the department heads or department P's have access to it, hire their day players and send out that offer. Or we can also, in addition to that, have accounting, have access to it, and initiate offers. We completely understand that in production, it's one of those things that can happen, um, you know, one way or another. So, so we try to make it as flexible as possible. Thank you. We also have um, a crew member that would prefer to stay anonymous. And this person says, as a transportation admin, we are required to verify time cards to make sure no one is in a force call before submitting time cards to payroll. How can we verify time cards before? Um, so essentially that would be as, as you would be a department head within the system, you could go ahead and fill out those time cards beforehand um, and send them to your crew members and then take a look and then have that conversation with them. But the, you do have some flexibility within the system as to who fills out what and some negotiation. Uh, here we go. I'm done with that. So, oh, and here, I think I just answered somebody else's question. Can department heads do that for their crew? Yes, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the best part about the flexibility in the system for sure. Um, so we do have a lot of questions and this has been upvoted. Is there a provision for our agents to participate in the Start Plus, Plus process? Um, I did answer that um, question earlier and the answer is that is not currently available in our system. It is designed for you to log in as yourself and use your username and password to complete your uh, onboarding and time cards. Um, so Kelsey is wondering if the SMS verification happens upon every login. Jim, you want to answer that one? Great. So it will happen every 24 hours. There is a checkbox at the bottom. If you're going to be coming in out of the system, you might want to check that checkbox. That way you don't have to do that SMS verification for a full 24 hours. Lovely. Also, Jesse is wondering if time cards are done daily or at the end of the week. Um, and Jesse, the answer to that is you can do either. You can go in um, every day if you have in and out times or even if you are an exempt employee, go in and do that. Or at the end of the week, go in, fill out your times and then just submit it on through. It, it really just depends on what you would like to do. Excellent. Um, and so there's a question here, Jim, it says, will the box rental, like a $50 example, be based on a daily or weekly? Um, what are they actually submitting in, in um, Start Plus or in Hours Plus? Great. 
So yeah, so in uh, let's talk about hours plus because that's what the employee will be submitting. Yep. Um, they can they can add their box rental and put in the amount for the week. If it's incorrect, the payroll accountant can adjust that amount, increase or decrease. No need to worry there. Uh, if it's coming from Start Plus and you want to see it on your deal, the person sending the offer can dictate whether that is per day or per week, and it'll say there on your start form and deal memo how much a day you're getting. Great. Fantastic. And then what about meal penalties? Do you just enter them in or is it in comments or how is that handled in, in hours plus? Great question. So all of the meal penalties are based upon a contract, right? So depending on whether you're union or non-union, you could have a different meal penalty threshold. So all the crew members are responsible for entering are the in and out times that they take their lunch. We're going to take those times and compare it against the contract rules and determine if there is a meal penalty there. And if there is, we're going to show the payroll accountant in hours plus. Fantastic. That's great. Um, let's see, we have a couple of more um, and we're going to answer a couple more questions. Um, how do you put down per diem on the paperwork? Yeah, so if you want to if you want to put pay, uh, per diem on your start offer, we do have a place for that. You just enter in the amount and uh, if that is per day or per week, um, tip, you know, per diem we know is per day, but you still want that specified. And then if you're going to be claiming that on a time card, you can put that in time card in the drop down and then enter the amount. The payroll accounting will also be able to increase that amount if it should be higher. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's great. Um, here's another one too. Um, sorry, Alexis, I just no. have to heat up. So um, the best boy who um, taught me how um, to, you know, to make sure like time cards and checks were, were kind of scrubbed through to make sure there wasn't any discrepancies. Um, does their responsibility change with this system? Um, and that's a really good question. I don't think that your responsibility really changes. It's just that we have different roles in the system in which you can actually review time cards. I think Alexis, you had mentioned a little bit about that as the department head role in the mm -hmm. system. I know today we were specifically focused on um, crew members and what their experience are, is um, going through this. But essentially, yes, if you still want to continue reviewing hours and times, you still will have that ability. And if you'd like that responsibility, you are absolutely welcome to continue that. That, is, that doesn't change with the system. However, it will hopefully make your, your job a lot easier in that it will allow, um, it will actually handle the calculations as well as, you know, based on the deal terms that were made and also um, verified through the hours that were worked. So with all that in place, you know, I don't think you'll spend as much time verifying that information. Um, and then we also have a question from Charles that says, if you would work into the next day, at, let's say to 1 or 2 a.m., how would you insert your end time? So our uh, time cards now go on the military clock. So if you go past, you know, 2,400 hours, you just put 25 or 2,600 hours, and then it knows. And because as of, um, Ivana and Jim were saying, it, it, our system calculates based on your specific deal, then it will be able to calculate correctly. Um, and here is a great question that really just makes me happy. <laughs> Will there be classes for department heads and keys to set up the team in hours? Yes, there are. We have rolling trainings. Um, we do them one-on-one uh, -on -one if need be, but we also have trainings where people can show up specifically to their role within the system, and then we walk people through that. Uh, we're really proud of not only the training that we give, but the support that we give because this is a bit of a transition going from paper to digital. So we're always happy to train, do whatever we can to just make sure that you feel like comfortable within the system, because that's the most important thing that you feel comfortable with this new system. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us today. Before we wrap out, um, just want to say a few more words about, you know, how you can get ready for when production returns and when you're getting ready to, to, to work. Um, number one is create your digital profile in my cast and crew. Um, you don't have to wait to do that. You can do that today and get everything prepped um, for when you do get hired. Um, the goal here is to update your direct deposit, your W-4, your address, and um, as well as upload your inventory to my files. Um, that's gonna help you get really prepared and ready for that. Um, and as always, you can contact our PLUS support team if you need any help today at plus.support at castandcrew.com.
So just want to say another thank you and we're excited um, to help you out today and we look forward to um, seeing you next time. Thank you again. Thank you everyone. That is the end of our webinar. And thanks to Ivana, Jim and Alexis for that look at my casting crew, Start Plus and Hours Plus. If you have any further questions regarding the Cast and Crew Digital Production Suite, we welcome you to contact us directly by emailing sales at castingcrew.com. We look forward to seeing you at future webinars. And until then, stay safe, everyone.